Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. In the showroom, the cars are the stars. In the shadows, something far more sinister. Why the feds were out in full force during Detroit's auto show. Also, driving danger. An officer crashes his SUV but says the automaker is to blame. Why he is suing Ford. And fight for freedom. Rick Wershe is just hours away from a critical hearing that could change his life. Thanks for being with us tonight. He spent the past 29 years in prison on a drug offense, but his days behind bars could be numbered. White boy Rick has his most important interview ever tomorrow morning in Manistee. Local four defender Kevin Dietz is there live tonight. Kevin, you spoke with Worshi about his big day. I did. This is Oaks Correctional Facility. You can see the barbed wire behind me. A big day for Rick Wershey tomorrow as he meets with Michael Egan, the head of the Michigan Parole Board. Egan can ask him any questions he wants. What he's trying to find out is if Wershey is remorseful for the crimes that he committed and that if it's decided that he's released, will he stay out of trouble and will he be a productive member of society? For Rick Wershey, it's one of the biggest interviews of his life, speaking with the head of the parole board. I spoke with Wershey today by telephone about the possibility of freedom after 29 years behind bars. It, it would be overwhelming, to say the least, to be able to hug my family and, you know, hug my grandkids and sit down and talk to them and play with them and eat dinner or lunch with them. Rick Wershey's attorney is Ralph Maselli. He will be at Rick's side for support. He says if he does well, it will lead to a full public hearing of the entire board. And the last time he had a, a, a pre-parole interview was, I think, in 2009, and he asked me to be his friend. So I drove up to northern Michigan through a blizzard, and we had an interview that I thought went very, very well. But then they decided to give him no consideration against. This time around, I think that they're going to give him a parole hearing. In the past, Wayne County prosecutors argued against Worshi's release. Now, Kim Worthy says she will not object if the parole board decides to let him go. If nobody objects to it, they could very well have a very, very cursory public hearing and just grant him his parole. For Worshi, it's the latest twist and turn on a 29-year roller coaster ride to freedom. He knows it looks good, but it has looked good before. The best words to say would be cautiously optimistic. I mean, you hope that it's over with after almost 30 years in here. Rick Worshi told me he's not nervous about the meeting tomorrow, and there's really no way for him to prepare for it. Whatever questions are asked, he said he's just going to answer them truthfully. If it goes well tomorrow, then Worshi could get a full hearing before the 10-member parole board, who would ultimately vote on whether or not to release him or keep him locked up for at least another five years. Kevin Dietz, Defenders. So with that meeting tomorrow, Kevin, do we know how long it's going to last, and then when will there be a decision for sure? Yeah, so the meeting tomorrow will only be about 45 minutes. It won't be too long. Mm -hmm. And Egan can take as long as he wants to decide. Last time around, uh, they spent almost a full year deciding and then ultimately said no. But all indications are things are going to move much quicker this time. They may have a decision in the next couple of weeks or so on whether or not to have that full 10-member board hearing. Right, and when they do, I know you will bring it to us. Kevin, thanks. You're looking at dash cam video here showing a disturbing crash involving a police officer in California. That officer says his Ford Explorer was pumping poisonous gases inside the vehicle, causing him to pass out. Hundreds have filed complaints other than him claiming the fumes made them sick. Priya Mann is live in Dearborn with what happened to this officer. Priya? Well, Jason, the attorney says his police officer was heading to a call. All of a sudden, he blacked out. The next thing he remembers, he's being cut out of his squad car. Now, a colleague was traveling behind him, recorded the moments leading up to the crash. This is the lawsuit that's just been filed against Ford Motor Company. A fraction of a second sooner, and he would have had a head-on collision. Disturbing dash cam video captured the moments a police officer lost control of his patrol car. Oh, well, he passes out, and what you are watching in that video is a vehicle traveling across several lanes of travel. That squad car ended up wrapped around a tree. Newport Beach police officer Brian McDowell was behind the wheel when he started to feel nauseous. Here's a deadly weapon going down the street, not being driven by somebody because they got 
carbon monoxide poisoning. McDowell's attorney claims a defect in the exhaust system can cause poisonous fumes to seep into the vehicle. The defect is in every Ford Explorer on the road. McDowell suffered a traumatic brain injury in the crash. So they ran a battery of tests on him, found nothing wrong with him, and you know a total clean bill of health. The only thing that makes sense is he got carbon monoxide poisoning from this event. The 36-year-old police officer has been on the force for five years, but has not been on active duty since the crash in 2015. You know, his dream of being a, you know, a cop on the beat is now probably going to be reduced to a desk job. McDowell is suing Ford Motor Company. His attorney says the defect affects Ford Explorers from 2011 to 2015. My advice to you is sell the car and get a new one. Don't try to get it fixed because there is no fix for it. And Ford did not return repeated calls for a comment, but in the past they've said some customers in rare circumstances have described an exhaust type smell. The attorney says he'll leave any potential financial settlement up to a jury. Reporting live from Dearborn, I'm Priya Mann, Local 4. And Priya, there hasn't been a recall on Ford Explorers. Is the company doing anything to address the concerns here? Well, the attorney says that Ford has issued technical service bulletins to dealerships, but he says that's not enough. He's pushing for a recall. All right, we'll see if it, if it comes down the pike. All right, Priya, thanks. We are waiting for Detroit police to release the name of the man shot and killed by an officer on the city's west side. The officer tried to stop the man for speeding, but he took off and ended up crashing. There was a struggle between the two, and that's when the suspect tried to grab the officer's gun and the officer opened fire. An investigation into the incident continues. Michigan State's women's gymnastics coach has been suspended related to the investigation into Dr. Larry Nasser. In a lawsuit, Kathy Klages is accused of downplaying complaints about alleged sexual abuse by Nasser. Nasser is being sued by more than two dozen women and girls who say the gymnastics doctor sexually abused them during treatments. One of the women says as a teen, she told Klages she was concerned about Nasser, but that Klages ignored her. The new span between Detroit and Canada appears to be a top concern for President Trump and Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. Today in a joint statement, the two leaders voiced support for the Gordie Howe International Bridge, which will be built not far from the existing Ambassador Bridge that you're looking at right there. President Trump and Prime Minister Trudeau say in part, quote, we look forward to the expeditious completion of the Gordie Howe International Bridge, which will serve as a vital economic link between our two countries. Canada has agreed to pay for all construction costs. Drivers beware, a fog advisory of sorts, still in effect on Gratiot near Russell. Low visibility again tonight because of a water leak underground causing more steam than normal to fill that street and powerful enough, as you can hear there, to rattle manhole covers. Detroit Water and Sewerage expects to have it fixed by the end of the week. Metro Detroiters are paying their respects to Mike Illich at Comerica Park. You're looking live right now at the ballpark where a memorial brought hundreds of people out today. You can see a couple of people out there late this hour. Fans have been writing messages and reliving their favorite memories of the Detroit icon. A public visitation will be held on Wednesday at the Fox Theater from noon until 8 p.m. A new face is joining the U.S. Postal Service's Forever Stamp Collection. To, yes, today the USPS honored Dorothy Height with the 2017 Black Heritage Forever Stamp. She dedicated her life to fighting for racial and gender equality. The ceremony was held at the Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History here in Detroit. A major change coming to an iconic magazine why Playboy is going back in time. We'll have that coming up and a big update in the case of a courtroom attack involving a metal shank. What happened today that could steer the case in a whole new direction? Hi, Ben. Hey, Kim, those uh, crystal clear skies that we have out there tonight will translate to sunshine in the morning, but the flakes will be flying by later tomorrow. We'll take a look at that coming up. All right, first, flashy cars, bright lights, and a whole lot more Detroit's auto show. They tend to lock to uh, situations such as that. What the feds were investigating behind closed doors, a defender's special report you don't want to miss next. Blitz, glamour, and guts steal the spotlight, but there's something sinister going on under the hood of the auto show. 14 to 15 potential uh, adult victims are being trafficked. What's really going on behind the closed doors at one of Detroit's biggest attractions? You need to stop exploiting our kids. 
Tonight, an eye-opening investigation into human trafficking during one of Detroit's most popular events. Now that the auto show is over and the undercover operation is complete, the FBI is sharing exactly what happened in the city and the suburbs, and in some cases involving children. Karen Drew has this Defender's investigation. The operation was kept hush hush. 12 to 15 agencies working together during the auto show. Now, typically during that time period, experts say they see an increase of about 150% of people offering sex. The goal of this operation, to stop human trafficking and save lives. It's the time of year when cars are the stars. The world descends on Detroit. Auto Show insiders, reporters, prospective car customers. That huge mix of a crowd can be tempting for some. When you're drawing in a large number of people, uh, and more specifically male clientele um, that are traveling away from the family, they tend to flock to uh, situations such as that. Situations like hiring women for sex. But this isn't just a story about prostitution. This is a story about human trafficking. Many of the women trafficked are young girls, minors. There's typically about 200 to 250 uh, advertisements per day. Supervisory Special Agent Michael Glennon is part of the Violent Crimes Against Children Task Force and coordinator of the Human Trafficking Division. The network um, is becoming more and more complex. Glennon says the pimps and human traffickers work together, warning each other online and on social media when the FBI is getting close. The weather reports are police activity, and so if there's thunderstorms in Canton, um, or it's cloudy with a chance of rain in Romulus, it's, uh, they're illustrating that there's police presence uh, or anticipated police presence, and it's a way of warning everybody. Um, and then they also keep all of our vehicles, uh, many of our tags, they take pictures of them and they'll post them online. Undercover agents made arrests at cheap motels and fancy hotels. Albeit Southfield to Warren to Sterling Heights or um, down to Romulus. The three-day undercover operation was a success. Uh, identified uh, four to five uh, pimps or exploiters uh, and made 22 arrests. We identified approximately 14 to 15 potential uh, adult victims with human trafficking. We were able to uh, recover two children uh, that were involved in uh, sex trafficking. Uh, I think one was 15 and one was 16, and you know they were brought down from uh, a city, another city into our area. Once the children and the other women are rescued from the situation, experts came in to help them get their lives back together so they're not victimized again. Led by the Salvation Army, but uh, Alternative for Girls, um, Vista Maria, and a number of the other nonprofit organizations do an amazing job. Agents will be back to work at next year's auto show, as well as many other upcoming undercover operations. The message they want out? We need to stop exploiting our kids. We're dedicated to eradicating human trafficking within our area. The National Center for Missing and Exploited Children estimates that 10% of those involved in the sex trade industry are under the age of 18. I'm Karen Drew, Local 4 Defenders. Okay, Karen, we have some breaking news to get to just into the Local 4 newsroom. According to NBC News, National Security Advisor Michael Flynn has resigned. Flynn has been the subject of scrutiny for allegedly communicating with Russia about sanctions while President Obama was still in office. So far, there's been no comment from President Trump or from the White House. And certainly much more to come on that story coming up on Local 4 News Today and yeah. the Today Show tomorrow morning. Let's bring in Ben and talk a little bit of weather. Actually, yeah, man, the car windows down in the middle of February. I that washed the car today, so that surely means it's going to rain or... <laughs> Snow or you're right. <laughs> I we, knew it. We, we of will course. have some snow around tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow will really be the only day that sort of looks like winter here in the next uh, five to seven. Uh, but temperatures right now 32 degrees is where we're at at Metro. A couple 20s out there. Port Huron at 27, Ann Arbor at 29. We talk about this every time there's clear skies. When you see these two locations get cold, that's an indication. Uh, that the uh, skies have cleared out, and that's definitely the case out there tonight. Wind chills not far behind those temperatures. Just about everybody in the low to mid 20s right now for how it feels. We will see the winds pick up as we get through the day tomorrow. And even though we talked about that there's going to be some flakes around, this is that uh, really that system. It's is out ahead of a cold front here in the UP, and it's not all that impressive. Uh, we will just see some very widely scattered snow showers, and this is mainly going to be in the evening hours tomorrow. Probably won't lead to any accumulation 
If we see it cover the ground in a couple spots, it's most likely going to be the far end of the north zone where that happens. Because remember, temperatures tomorrow still going to make the mid 40s in the afternoon before that snow arrives. So let's time it out here in the forecast as we start out with clear skies in the morning or at least mostly sunny conditions. Then those clouds start to thicken up as we get through the day tomorrow. About 7, 8 o'clock in the evening, we'll start seeing those snowflakes fly. And again, most of that's going to be in the north zone to start. Cold front will push everything down to the south. But behind that front, that's where the colder air sets in. And we will take a step backwards for midweek before we start bouncing up going into the upcoming weekend. So upper 20s tonight for overnight lows. These are the high temperatures in your four zone forecast. Start in the metro zone 45 in Detroit, 43 in West Bloomfield. Generally mid 40s here in our south zone. Warmest temperatures will be 46 and it's going to be right around the Ohio state line. West zone anywhere from 40 in Genesee County to 45 down here in Manchester. And there will be a couple spots here in Sandalac County where you're not going to make it out of the 30s tomorrow. Marlette, Sandusky and Lexington 39 and low 40s pretty much everywhere else. So once we get into the uh, extra clouds in the second half of the day and we see a couple of those snowflakes, that's it for precipitation in the seven day forecast. We are completely dry all the way through the start of next week. We've got plenty of sunshine here Thursday through Monday and after a couple departures here on Wednesday and Thursday, <laughs> temperatures really warm up into the weekend. Three days Look of 50s that. and sunshine. I don't know what you're doing, but keep it up. <laughs> <laughs> I know no complaints here. Yeah, Thank you, Ben. Been. Uh, race against time. What's going on in California tonight to protect residents from a broken dam with more rain on the way? And he tried to attack a prosecutor just before being sentenced a near miss today. A major admission from the man in this video. Next Hank. He's fun, active, curious, like so many of the other kids at our adopted school, Thurgood Marshall. How old do you think I am? 20 something. Thank you, you're my best friend. <laughs> but Donovan has experienced incredible tragedy in his young life. For Donovan is alert at the hospital. However, he lost an eye. We knew we could help change his life and restore his confidence, but we had no idea how much this strong, loving kid would change our lives. I didn't know you want to help the spirit and the soul and help my child physically. Join me for a very special Help Me Hank report tomorrow at 11. Right now. Welcome back. A Lansing man is heading to prison for trying to stab a prosecutor with a metal shank during a hearing. 35 year old Joshua Harding pleaded guilty today for this attack that happened back in August. The prosecutor jumped out of the way just as Harding tried to stab him. Harding was initially in court being sentenced to 19 years for sexual abuse. He'll face additional time when he's sentenced next month for attempted murder. It'll be months before Wayne County finishes vetting proposals for the new jail site. Dan Gilbert hopes to build a new jail in exchange for the downtown Detroit site where he wants to build a soccer stadium. County Executive Warren Evans will present contracts to the county commission on Wednesday to analyze it. Earlier in the newscast, we told you about a lawsuit filed against Ford by a California police officer. Well, we received a statement from Ford tonight about the case, and they say they take customer concerns seriously and will cooperate with NHTSA on the investigation. In rare circumstances, there have been instances where customers detected an exhaust odor in explorers, and while it poses no safety risk, they say customers can contact their dealer to address any concerns. Again, that's the quote coming tonight from Ford. Detroit police are pulling surveillance video from several businesses after a Q-line streetcar was vandalized with a derogatory anti-police message. Police believe it was done by a particular group of vandals who could soon face felony charges. Desperate efforts tonight to prevent a disaster at the nation's tallest dam. Helicopters are being used to pick up boulders with the hope of stabilizing the Oroville Dam in Northern California. Tonight, the state's governor requested federal assistance for three counties in the path of potential danger. Nearly 200,000 residents evacuated yesterday over concerns of flooding, but the state is optimistic in its efforts to contain that threat. Naked women are returning to Playboy. Last year, the magazine dropped nudes to get more readers and advertisers. But now Cooper Hefner, the son of Playboy founder Hugh Hefner, says that move was a mistake and Playboy is now reclaiming its identity. The magazine's March-April issue cover will feature the headline, Naked is Normal. 